back to request the viewers to please go through my previous videos in order to understand the basics of ICTPL5 timer and its application as a stable multi vibrator, a stable with 50% duty cycle uh, oscillator and voltage controlled oscillator circuits. So let us uh, try to understand how stable 5 timer can be used as mono stable multi vibrator. Now what is mono stable multi vibrator? So it is a circuit. Uh, which can generate rectangular pulse signal of width W uh, using in monostable mode. So width of the uh, rectangular pulse can be controlled by external R and C uh, time constant. So this is the circuit diagram for uh, triple five timer connected in a stable mode. If you compare this circuit diagram with the a stable circuit diagram, then we can uh, we can relate that in case of a stable mode the pin number 6 and 2 they are connected to R and C common terminal. So this is just stable. The detailed working of this stable I have given in uh, lecture 1, uh, video 1. Now in case of mono stable pin number 2 is not connected to pin number 6 but instead uh, we apply the trigger signal to pin number 2. So this is the difference between mono stable and unstable. In unstable there is no external input trigger signal so the circuit oscillates on its own therefore a stable is also called as free running oscillator whereas in case of monostable multi vibrator uh, external input signal is required and it is given at pin number 2 let us now see how a monostable circuit works so in the beginning when the external input trigger signal is applied and when the voltage of the input trigger signal falls below vcc by 3 then comparator 2 gives uh, high output at the same time comparator 1 gives low output it is because in the beginning there is no charge on the capacitor when the power is just switched on as there is no charge on the capacitor so voltage across the capacitor is zero as voltage across the capacitor is zero therefore voltage at pin numbers point uh, pin number 6 is zero therefore comparator 1 gives low output so comparator 2 gives uh, high output comparator 1 gives low output as comparator 1 gives low output Q becomes 0 as Q becomes 0 base of the transistor uh, base of the transistor becomes 0 as base of the transistor becomes low base emitter is not followed by us as base emitter is not followed by us therefore this transistor is as good as if it is cut off so therefore now current starts flowing from this battery uh, towards R and towards this capacitor and therefore the capacitor starts charging as capacitor charges voltage across the capacitor increases exponentially as voltage across the capacitor increases exponentially voltage at pin number 6 also increases exponentially as soon as voltage across the capacitor and hence voltage at pin number 6 becomes slightly greater than 2 by 3 VCC comparator 1 gives high output at the same time comparator 2 gives low output it is because the low voltage pulse has gone now pulse is high so comparator 2 gives low output comparator 1 gives high output as comparator 1 gives high output q becomes 1 as q becomes 1 base of the transistor becomes high as base of the transistor becomes high base emitter here now becomes forward bias therefore transistor starts conducting as transistor conducts now the capacitor gets path to discharge through this transistor as capacitor discharges voltage across the capacitor decreases as voltage decreases it, it continues to decrease it decreases up to 0 volt so voltage becomes 0 here now this comparator 1 gives low output comparator 2 also gives low output now the circuit remains in this state until next trigger input signal comes so when next trigger input signal comes and when the voltage of the trigger signal falls below VCC by 3 comparator 2 gives high output comparator 1 already gives 0 output low output so Q becomes 0 as Q becomes 0 base of the transistor becomes low as base of the transistor becomes low uh, this base emitter is not followed by us so this transistor is as good as if it is cut off therefore capacitor now starts charging through R as capacitor charges voltage across the capacitor increases as soon as voltage across the capacitor and hence voltage at pin number 6 becomes slightly greater than 2 by 3 VCC comparator 1 gives high output comparator 2 gives low output q becomes 1 as q becomes 1 base of the transistor becomes high as base of the transistor becomes high now the capacitor discharges and these cycles are repeated so here uh, 
the discharging of the capacitor uh, it discharges up to zero and it remains there until next trigger signal comes so discharging of the capacitor is the stable state of the circuit so this as this circuit has one stable state that is this discharging of the capacitor state so therefore this circuit is called as monostable multivibrator let us now see uh, how output uh, pulse width is determined by which parameter so uh, here i am indicating i am showing you the input trigger signal in the form of small pulses so here uh, from this point to this point the uh, input voltage of the signal falls below vcc by 3 so this is vcc so for this much duration the voltage is less than vcc by 3 again for this much amount of time voltage is very high vcc and for this much amount of time voltage is less than vcc by 3 now as soon as this voltage comes less than vcc by 3 here at this point the computer 2 gives high output so q bar becomes high q becomes low as q becomes low the base becomes low so base emitter is not forward bias and then capacitor starts charging so as soon as this point comes from here to here capacitor starts charging so capacitor charging continues till some point when the voltage here becomes more than 2 vcc by 3 that time s becomes 1 q becomes 1 base of the transistor becomes high so therefore this starts this transistor start conducting capacitor discharges so as soon as this point reach the capacitor starts discharging it continues to discharge and it when the discharging completed uh, gets completed uh, so when voltage here becomes zero uh, the circuit remains in this state uh, both in zero until next input trigger comes until this point comes and then again capacitor starts charging so uh, the output remains higher during charging of the capacitor so this is the pulse width and this depends on how long the capacitor charges so it depends on R and C. So width of this pulse is given is determined by external R and C and it is given by the formula W equals to 1.1 R into C. Thank you. Please like and subscribe my videos. Thank you. Hush.